He's alive. You're the arms tech president, Kenneth Baker, right? Don't worry. I'm here to save you. No! Don't, don't, don't touch it! Four. C4 will blow up along with the old man. So you're the one that the boss keeps talking about. And you? Special Operations Foxhound. Revolver. Ocelot. I've been waiting for you, Solid Snake. Now we'll see if the man can live up to the legend. This is the greatest handgun ever made. The Colt Single Action Army. Six bullets. More than enough to kill anything that moves. Now I'll show you why they call me Revolver.
were pretty good. Just what I'd expect from the man with the same code as the boss. It's been a long time since I had such a good fight, but I'm just getting warmed up. Wow. 
snake you are. Come, let's fight! I think you might be able to fool the tank's electronic systems with a chaff grenade.
Boss, is this all right? Just giving him the card like that? We'll play with him a little longer. You would be wise not to underestimate him. What did you think of him? He is just as you said. He lives and breathes combat just like you. I would expect no less from your... You see? General Ivan, I hear that you lost your arm and ran away home. Watch your tongue, shaman. In the language of the Sioux people, Sioux means snake. It is known as an animal to be feared. Well, snake is mine now. When I meet him next, I'll take special care of him. Not yet. Don't kill him yet. He and I will meet again in battle. Yes, the raven on my head, it thirsts for his blood. Who are you? Where is my friend? What? What are you talking about? Oh, 
what next? Snake. Hey, you're that ninja. I've been waiting for you, Snake. Who are you? Neither enemy nor friend. I am back from a world where such words are meaningless. I've removed all obstacles. Now you and I will battle to the death. What do you want? Oh, I've waited a long time for this day. Now I want to enjoy this moment. <laughs> What's with these guys? It's like one of my Japanese animes. I've come from another world to battle with you. What is it? Revenge? It is nothing so trivial as revenge. A fight to the death with you. Only in that can my soul find respite. I will kill you, or you will kill me. It makes no difference. <laughs> All right then, watch from your box seat. I need that man. Keep your hands off him. Now, make me feel it. Make me feel alive again.
Is it over?
powerful practitioner of psychokinesis and telepathy in the world. No, there's no need for words, Snake. I am... Psychomagus. That's right. This is no trick. It's true power. It's useless. I told you. I can read your every thought. You're a careless man, aren't you? And you're a poor warrior as well. However, you are skillful at eluding traps. Still don't believe me? Now I'll read more deeply into your soul. No saved games. Your memory is completely clean. You have not saved very often. You are somewhat reckless. I can read you like an open book. You still don't believe me? I will show you my psychokinetic power. Put your controller on the floor. Put it down as flat as you can. That's good. Now, I will move your controller by the power of my will alone. Controller socket. Plug your controller into socket three. Do that, and he won't be able to read your moves.
Is there any reason you can't use controller socket 4? Desire 
to pass on one seed. It was enough to make me sick. Every living thing on this planet exists to mindlessly pass on their DNA. We're designed that way. And that is why there is war. But you are different. You are the same as us. We have no past, no future. We live in the moment. That's our only purpose. Humans weren't designed to bring each other happiness. From the moment we're thrown into this world, we're fated to bring each other nothing but pain and misery. The first person whose mind I dove into was my father's. I saw nothing but disgust and hatred for me in his heart. My mother died in childbirth, and he despised me for it. I thought my father was going to kill me. That's when my future disappeared. I lost my past as well. When I came to, the village was engulfed in flames. Are you saying that you burned your village down to bury your past? I see that you have suffered the same trauma. <laughs> we are truly the same, you and I. The world is a more interesting place with people like you in it. I never agreed with the boss's revolution. His dreams of world conquest do not interest me. I just want an excuse to kill as many people as I could. You monster. Let him talk. He doesn't have much time left. I've seen true evil, Snake. Seeing you calms my soul. You're like the boss. No, worse. Compared to you, I'm like a saint. I read her mind as well. Merrill's. I saw you there. You have a large place in her heart. A large place. And getting bigger. But I do not know if your futures lie together. I have a last request. What is it? My mask. Put it back on. Okay. Like this. Other people's thoughts force their way into my mind. Before I die, I want to be by myself. I want to be left alone in my own world. Go, Meryl. I'm sorry. Meryl. How could I let Mantis control my mind like that? If 
If you're going to doubt yourself, I'll leave you here. You're right. Don't regret your past. Learn from it. Regrets just make a person weaker. You're right. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Snake, can I ask you something? More complaints? About what Mantis said. I was just wondering... What? What's the problem now? Oh, no. Nothing. So tell me, Snake. What's your name? Your real name? A name means nothing on the battlefield. After a week, no one has a name. How old are you? Old enough to know what death looks like. Any family? No, but I was raised by many people. Is there anyone you like? I've never been interested in anyone else's life. So you are all alone, just like Manta said. Other people just complicate my life. I don't like to get involved. You're a sad, lonely man. Come on, let's go. Get out of here. 
you get past here. Liquid. You're not going any farther. Die! It's a long way down. If only I had a rope. I should be able to use that rope I got. What are you going to do? Take on a hide with your bare hands?
liquid. That takes care of the cremation.
have waited for this moment. I am a sniper. Waiting is my job. Never moving a muscle. Concentrating. <coughs> I am long shot. You cannot save me. Please, just finish me quick. I am a Kurd. I have always dreamed of a peaceful place like this. A Kurd? So that's why you're called Wolf. I was born on a battlefield. Raised on a battlefield. Gunfire, sirens and screams. They were my lullabies. Hunted like dogs day after day. Driven from our ragged shelters. That was my life. Each morning I'd wake up and find a few more of my family or friends dead beside me. I'd stare at the morning sun and pray to make it through the day. The governments of the world turned a blind eye to our misery. But then, he appeared. My hero, Saladin. He took me away from all that. Saladin? You mean Big Boss? I became a sniper. Hidden. Watching everything through a rifle scope. Now I could see war not from the inside, but from the outside, as an observer. I watched the brutality, the stupidity of mankind through the scope of my rifle. I joined this group of revolutionaries to take my revenge on the world. But I have shamed myself and my people. I am no longer the wolf I was born to be. In the name of vengeance, I sold my body and my soul. Now, I am nothing more than a dog. Wolves are noble animals. They're not like dogs. In Yupik, the word for wolf is Keglanek, and the Aleuts revere them as honorable cousins. They call mercenaries like us dogs of war. It's true, we're all for sale for some price or another. But you're different, untamed, solitary. You're no dog. You're a wolf. Who are you? Are you Saladin? Wolf, you spared Meryl's life. Even when I'm just an onlooker, I don't like to see women or children get hurt. Rest easy. You'll die as the proud wolf you are. I finally understand. I wasn't waiting to kill people. I was waiting for someone to kill me. A man like you. You're a hero. Please, set me free. Why? Why? I loved you. What is it? My gun. Give it to me. She is part of me. Ah! Everyone is 
is here now. Okay, hero. Set me free. Goodbye. Snake, you said that love could bloom on a battlefield. But I couldn't save her. What are you doing? Returning it to its owner. I don't need a handkerchief. Why? I don't have any more tears to shed. <laughs> I'm going to the underground base. We're out of time. I know. You'll have to protect yourself now. Don't trust anyone. Yeah. If I can't stop Metal Gear, this whole place will be bombed to hell. Yeah. We might not meet again. Don't lose the codec. I'll be behind you all the way. You can leave any time. Get a head start. A head start on your new life. Snake! What was she fighting for? What am I fighting for? What are you fighting for? If we make it through this, I'll tell you. Okay. I'll be searching too. like most people think. They're simply returning to the natural world, that which is no longer needed. Sometimes, they even attack wounded foxes. You were the one in the M1 tank? Must have been a tight fit for a big boy like you. 
<laughs> but that was no true battle. The ravens and I were testing to see what kind of man you were. The judgment is decided. The ravens say you are a true warrior. Am I hallucinating? I... I can't move. The raven has put the mark of death upon you. Blood from the east flows within your veins. Ah, your ancestors too were raised on the barren plains of Mongolia. Inuit and Japanese are cousins to each other. We share many ancestors, you and I. There's no crows in my family tree. You ready? I am not fond of snakes, but you are family, so I cannot complain. But there will be no holding back. <laughs> you live in Alaska, too. You know of the World Eskimo Indian Olympics. With that strength, you must have been training in the stick pull and four-man carry. Yes, you are right. But there is another event that I excel at. It is called the ear pull. It's an event where two opponents pull each other's ears while enduring the harsh cold. It tests spiritual as well as physical strength. You want to pull each other's ears? The form is different, but the spirit is the same. Rejoice, Snake! Ours will be a glorious battle. This isn't glorious. It's just plain killing. Violence isn't a sport. Well, we will see if there is iron in your words.
just as the boss said. It is my existence which is no longer needed in this world. But my body will not remain in this place. My spirit and my flesh will become one with the ravens. In that way, I will return to Mother Earth who bore me. Snake! I will be watching you. Understand? Snake, take this security card. It will open that door. Why? You are a snake which was not created by nature. You and the boss, you are from another world. A world that I do not wish to know. Go and do battle with him. I will be watching from above. First, I'll give you a hint. The man you saw die before your eyes. That was not the DARPA chief. It was Decoy Octopus, a member of Foxhound. He was a master of disguise. He copied his subjects down to the blood, so he drained the chief's blood and took it into himself. But he wasn't able to deceive the Angel of Death. The Angel of Death? Why go to so much trouble? Why impersonate the chief? <laughs> that is the end of my hint. You must solve the rest of the riddle yourself. an end to it, but you are different. What are you trying to say? The path you walk on has no end. No matter how far you go, or how many corpses you crawl over, the killing will never end. It's a future without hope. Hear me, Snake! My spirit will be watching you.
Did you like my sunglasses? Oh, you'd point a weapon at your own brother? Why did you disguise yourself as master? So I could manipulate you more easily. You performed quite well, I must say. <sighs> Although the boys at the Pentagon are probably saying the same thing. What the hell are you talking about? Following orders blindly with no questions asked? You've lost your warrior's pride and become nothing more than a pawn, Snake. What? Stopping the nuclear launch? Rescuing the hostages? It was all just a diversion. A diversion? The Pentagon only needed you to come into contact with us. That's what killed the arms tech president and decoy octopus. You don't mean... That's right. You were sent here to kill us, so they could retrieve Metal Gear undamaged along with bodies of the Genome Soldiers. From the beginning, the Pentagon was just using you as a vector to spread Fox Die. Fox Die? It can't be! Are you telling me Naomi was working with the Pentagon? They thought she was, but it seems that Dr. Naomi Hunter couldn't be controlled so easily. What? We've got a spy working in the Pentagon. He reported that Dr. Hunter altered Fox Dye's program just before the operation, but no one knows how or why. I wonder. Maybe they arrested her so they could find out the answer to that. No doubt. But I had no idea she was motivated by such petty revenge. We still don't know what changes she made to Fox Dye's program. Oh well, doesn't matter. I've already added the Fox Dye vaccine to my list of White House demands. There's a vaccine? There must be. But that woman is the only one who really knows. Anyway, it might prove to be unnecessary. Yeah, why is that? You were successful in coming into contact with all of us, so we must have all been exposed to the virus. It's true that the arms tech president and decoy octopus were killed by Fox Dye. But Ocelot, myself, and you, the carrier, were apparently unaffected. A bug in the virus's programming? Hmm, could be. In any case, if it doesn't kill you, then I'm not worried either. After all, our genetic code is identical. So it's true. You and I are... Yes, twins. But we're not ordinary twins. We're twins linked by cursed genes. Les enfants terribles! You're fine. You got all of the old man's dominant genes. I got all the flawed, recessive genes. Everything was done so that you would be the greatest of his children. The only reason I exist is so they could create you. So you're saying I'm the dominant one? That's right. I'm just the leftovers of what they used to make you. Can you understand what it's like to know that you're garbage since the day you were born? <laughs> but I'm the one father chose. So that's why you're so obsessed with Big Boss. Some warped kind of love. Ha! Love? It's hate. His choosing me, knowingly, to be the inferior one? For this, I want revenge! You don't even understand this! You, who could kill your own real father! You stole my chance for revenge! Now I'll finish the work that father began! I will surpass him! I will destroy him! You're just like Naomi. Well, I'm not like you. Unlike you, I'm proud of the destiny that is encoded into my very genes. You missed your last chance! 
you'll regret that forever!
Ray Fox. A name from long ago. It sounds better than Deep Throat. So it is you. You look terrible, Snake. You haven't aged well. I'll send you back to hell! She's hell-bent on taking revenge for you. Naomi. You're the only one who can stop her. No, I can't. Why? Because I'm the one who killed her parents. I was young then, and couldn't bring myself to kill her, too. Oh, I felt so bad that I decided to take her with me. I raised her like she was my own blood, to soothe my guilty conscience. Even now, she thinks of me as her brother. Fox. Outwardly, we may have seemed like contented brother and sister, but every time I looked into her eyes, I trembled with fear. Tell her for me. Tell her that I was the one who did it. There you are! We're just about out of time. Here's a final present from Deep Throat. I'll stop it from moving.
in front of you, I can finally die. It's no that good. I can't land. do it. I was taken from the battle, neither truly alive nor truly dead. An undying shadow in a world of light. It's no but good. Soon, I can't do it. Soon it will finally end. It's no good. I can't. of the government or anyone else. Fighting was the only thing, the only thing I was good at. But at least uh, I always fought for what I believed in. Snake. When death is entreated, the battle is decided. You see, you can't protect anyone, not even yourself. you into dust!
sleeping late as usual, eh, Snake? Liquid, you're still alive. I won't die. As long as you still live. Too bad. It looks like your revolution was a failure. Just because you've destroyed Metal Gear doesn't mean I'm done fighting. Fighting? What are you really after? The restoration of the era when warriors such as us lived as we should. That was Big Boss's fantasy. It was his dying wish. When he was young, during the Cold War, the world needed men like us. We were valued then. We were desired. But things are different now. With all the liars and hypocrites running the world, war isn't what it used to be. We're losing our place in a world that no longer needs us. A world that now spurns our very existence. You should know that as well as I do. After I launch this weapon and get our billion dollars, we'll be able to bring chaos and honor back to this world gone soft. Conflict shall breed conflict. New hatreds will arise, and our own biosphere shall steadily expand. But as long as there are people, there will always be war. But the problem is balance. Father knew what type of a balance was best. Is that the only reason? Isn't that reason enough for warriors such as us? I don't want that kind of world. Ha! You lie! So why are you here then? Why do you continue to follow your orders while your superiors betray you? Why did you come here? Well, I'll tell you then. You enjoy all the killing, that's why. What? Are you denying it? Haven't you already killed most of my comrades? That was... <laughs> I, I watched your face as you delivered the coup de grace. Oh, it reflected such vitality. You're wrong. There is a killer inside you. You don't have to deny it. We were created to be that way. Created? Les enfants terribles. The terrible children. That's what the project was called. It started in the 1970s. Their plan was to artificially create the most powerful soldier possible. The person that they chose as the model was a man known then as the greatest living soldier in the world. Big Boss. But Father was wounded in combat and already in a coma when they brought him in. So they created us from his cells. With a combination of 20th century analog cloning and the Super Baby Method. Super Baby Method? They fertilized an egg with one of father's cells, and then let it divide into eight clone babies. Then they transferred the clones to someone's uterus, and later intentionally aborted six of the fetuses to encourage strong fetal growth. You and I were originally octuplets. Octuplets? Yes. The other six of our brothers were sacrificed to make us. We were accomplices in murder before the day we were even born. So, it was you and I. Two fertilized eggs with exactly the same DNA. But they weren't finished yet. They used me as a guinea pig to create a phenotype in which all of the dominant genes were expressed to create you. I got all the recessive genes. You took everything from me before I was even born. But you and I aren't his only children. What? The genome soldiers. They too are his progeny, carrying on his genetic legacy. 
But unlike us, they carry it digitally. With the completion of the Human Genome Project in the last century, the mysteries of humanity were laid bare. Thanks to father's DNA, they were able to identify more than 60 soldier genes responsible for everything from strategic thinking to the proverbial killer instinct. Those soldier genes were transplanted using gene therapy into the members of the next generation special forces. That's how they became the genome soldiers. That's right. The genome soldiers that you've been killing right and left are our brothers with the same genes as ours. The genome soldiers? They are misshapen creatures, artificially produced from father's genetic pattern. They are our blood brothers, and they were born of many an ultimate sacrifice. Sacrifices? Human experiments. Huh? 1991. The Gulf War. The military secretly injected soldiers with the soldier genes. The Gulf War syndrome that hundreds of thousands of returning soldiers complained about was a side effect of it. Ha! Everyone knows that the Gulf War Syndrome was caused by exposure to pesticides and radiation from depleted uranium rounds. <laughs> that was just a cover story issued by the Pentagon. First they tried to say it was post-traumatic stress disorder, then chemical biological weapons, the poison gas detection units, anti-sarin injections, were all just to cover up the secret genetic experiments. So the, the so-called Gulf War babies that have been reported by Gulf War veterans are... Yes, they too are our brothers and sisters. So the genome soldiers mean that the experiments were a success? Success? Don't be a fool. They're a complete failure. We're on the verge of extinction. What? Have you ever heard of the asymmetry theory? Nature tends to favor asymmetry. Those species which have gone extinct all show signs of symmetry. The genome soldiers suffer from the same problem, signs of symmetry. So do I, as do you. That's right. We are all on the verge of death at the genetic level. We don't know when or what type of disease will occur. That's why we need the old man's genetic information. You want Big Boss's DNA so you can save your family? It's very touching. <laughs> In nature, family members don't mate with each other, and yet they help each other to survive. Do you know why? because it increases the chances that shared genes will be transmitted to future generations. Altruism among blood relatives is a response to natural selection. That we will help our blood relatives is inscribed in our very genes. You're telling me that your genes are ordering you to save the genome soldiers? You can't fight your genes. It's fate. All living things are born for the sole purpose of passing on their parents' genes. That's why I'll follow what my genes tell me. And then, I'm going to go beyond, in order to break the curse of my heritage. And to do that, first, I will kill you. Look behind you. Meryl? Is she alive? Hmm. I'm not sure. She was alive a few hours ago. Poor girl kept calling your name. Meryl? 
stupid woman falling in love with a man who doesn't even have a name. I have a name. No. We have no past, no future. If we did, our fate is nothing but what is determined in the genes we inherited from our father. Let Meryl go. As soon as we finished our business, we're almost out of time. You're talking about Fox Die. No. It seems now that the Pentagon knows that Metal Gear is destroyed. They've arrived at a decision. They won't even need a BDA. If you want the details, why don't you ask your precious Colonel Campbell? <laughs> oh, there's no way out for us. Let's finish this before the airstrike. You stole everything from me. I shall nullify you and your genes, and I will take them all back. She'll make a beautiful sacrifice for our final battle. Do you see this? This will be the time limit for our final battle. When death comes for this girl, this nuclear module shall vanish from this world as well. If you win, you might still be able to save her. You could enjoy one brief moment of love before the end. this line, you'll fall. At this height, it'll kill even you. How at you, snake!
Uh, snake? Uh, is that you? Snake, you're alive. Thank God. Meryl? Meryl, are you okay? Are you okay? Is that all you can say? Meryl, you must have been terrible. It wasn't that bad. I didn't give in to the torture. Torture? And things even worse than that. I was fighting too. Just like you. You're a strong woman. Fighting them made me feel closer to you. I felt like you were there with me. It gave me the strength to go on. But I was scared. I'm sorry. Don't say that. But it made me realize something. During all the pain and shame, there was one thing I was sure of. A single hope that I held on to. And that hope kept me alive. <gasps> Snake, I wanted to see you again. Let's get the hell out of here. What about him? Where is Otacon? He's fighting right now. With his old self, to be the man he wants to be. He's fighting for us too? Yeah, and I don't want it to be in vain. Me too.
Are you okay? He's dead. That means... Don't say it, Snake. What happened to the air raid? No stealth bombers in sight. Each person is born with their fate written into their own genetic code, inscribed into their genes, but that's not all there is to life. I finally realized that. I told you before, the reason that I was interested in genes and DNA. Because I wanted to know who I was, where I came from. I thought that if I analyzed my DNA, I could find out who I was, who my parents were. And I thought that if I knew that, then I'd know what path I should take in life. But I was wrong. I didn't find anything. I didn't learn anything. Just like with the genome soldiers, you can input all the genetic information, but that doesn't make them into the strongest soldiers. The most we can say about DNA is that its genetic information houses a person's strengths or destiny. You mustn't allow yourself to be chained to fate, to be ruled by your genes. Humans can choose the type of life they want to live. Snake, whether you've been programmed or not isn't important. The important thing is that you choose life. And then live. Don't you think, Snake? Don't worry. I'm gonna choose life too. Until today, I've always looked for a reason to live. But from now on, I'm going to just live. Genes exist to pass down our hopes and dreams for the future through our children. Living is a link to what will come. All life is tethered to the future. Loving each other, teaching each new generation, then the world can change. I finally realized it, the true meaning of life. Thank you, Snake. Look, I found this. Let's keep it as a reminder. Of what? 
A reminder of a successful mission? Or a reminder of the first time we met? A reminder of how to live. Huh? Until today, I've lived only for myself. My survival instinct that tells me not to die. That's all the motive I've had in my life. That's not just you. That's how everyone is. I only felt truly alive when I was staring death in the face. I don't know. Maybe it's written into my genes. What about now? What do your genes say about your future now? Maybe it's time I live for someone else. Someone else? Yeah. Someone like you. Maybe that's the real way to live. So, where to, Snake? David. My name is David. <laughs> okay, so where to, Dave? Hmm. I think it's time we look for a new path in life. A new path? A new purpose. Will we find it? We'll find it. I know we'll find it. Hey, what are those? Caribou. To the illusions, the caribou is a symbol of life. It'll be spring here soon. For us, too. Yeah. Spring brings new life to everything. It's a time for hope. I've lived here a long time, but Alaska has never looked more beautiful. The sky, the sea, the caribou, and most of all, you. It's nice, isn't it? Being alive. Come on. Let's enjoy life.